These are the battleground seats. These are the 10 seats where a swing of less than 10% could see a seat change hands, or where sitting MPs are otherwise vulnerable. Labour will be looking to knife edge Brighton, where swings of less than 2% could deliver free vital seats at the expense of the Conservatives and the Greens. At the other end of the region, a Labour win in Swindon South is a possibility, and if that happened, then Ed Miliband would be well on the way to being the next Prime Minister. A Labour win in Portsmouth South is possible if the Lib Dem vote collapses, as recent polls seem to indicate. UKIP are also fighting hard in this seat, which could develop a fascinating three-way marginal. Even in years when the Conservatives do badly UK-wide, they have in the past taken the vast majority of seats in the rural and suburban south. The Lib Dems held on to Eastleigh in a bitterly fought 2013 by-election. It is a seat the Conservatives would expect to win, but a large turnout for UKIP who came second split the right of centre vote. If UKIP voters in Eastleigh can be persuaded to switch to the Conservatives, then they should be able to take the seat and edge closer to an overall majority in Parliament. Southampton is Labour's only parliamentary power base in the South, and this gives the city's two seats huge national importance. Wins here would see David Cameron well on the way to an overall majority. Now, the Lib Dems' position in the polls is so bad that they will be fighting a defensive campaign. In 2010, they lost both Romsey and Winchester to the Conservatives. Winning back these seats while holding on in Eastleigh and Portsmouth would be a very good result for the party this time. In 2010, UKIP made hardly any impression, but by-election victories and opinion poll advances have made them a significant but unpredictable force. Eastleigh is one of UKIP's main targets in the whole country. UKIP will hope to replace the Lib Dems as the anti-establishment party around the region, and this could bring Portsmouth South within their reach. It seems ministers are actually lining up as again, for the fourth week in a row, the Conservatives are back in the area to announce yet more news in the lead up to the general election. People who come in to work in a hospital at whatever level, as a porter, as a healthcare assistant, can aspire to those more challenging and more highly qualified jobs, um, whether nursing or midwifery. Um, that's what we're announcing today, more money to make sure that that ladder has every rung in place. The party so far seems to be throwing everything they have, but with months still to go, will it be enough to persuade those crucial undecided voters? Brooke Perriam, Winchester News Online. After a very eventful Eastleigh by-election two years ago, it seems the Liberal Democrats are taking a quieter approach as the general election looms. Well, it just goes to show that the, the Conservatives really are making a big effort to win this seat. A lot of them see this as the whole borough as natural Tory territory. I'm not sure how effective that sort of thing is. I think all we can do is keep doing what we're doing, showing that we are in contact with ordinary people. We as Liberal Democrats in Eastleigh have always gone out to see people month after month, week after week, right the way through the year, not just at election time. So will this quiet approach work? We'll see on May the 7th. Sophie Hannum, Winchester News Online. Tuning in to the fight for the Eastleigh seat. The Green Party say communication is key. What we want to be out, out there is demonstrating what our policies are so that they can consider alternatives. If, we don't, if we're not there to give them alternative views, uh, th then there's absolutely no way they'd ever consider voting for us. So that's what I see as important. Talking to people is the biggest uh, uh, thing we can do. It seems the battle really has commenced, but we still have 12 weeks to see if a piano is the only grand gesture the party has to play. John Morrison, Winchester News Online. Winnell's cumulative poll works by adding new interviews about voting intentions every week. We started three weeks ago and our total is now 97, or about 2% of the student population, giving us an increasingly accurate picture of student opinion. After adding this week's interviews, the Conservatives have emerged as the biggest single party on campus, with the Greens second and Labour third. These parties are still neck and neck, with the lead changing every time we add more results. The big news is that the Lib Dems have a tiny level of support, 
and this has even decreased as our sample size has increased. Also noteworthy, the UKIP bandwagon which saw them come second in the Eastleigh by-election locally have almost no support on campus. If these figures are anything like an accurate reflection, then this is very good news for Winchester's sitting MP Steve Bryan. If he can get a majority on campus, he should have no problem in getting a huge majority in the city as a whole. Henry Nixon, Winchester News Online.